Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to Sea Harvest Church. That's right, can I invite all of you to stand on your feet? Welcome to our Saturday 5 p.m. service. The Bible tells us let everyone that has breath praise the Lord. How many of you, you are alive here in this place, excited for service? Can you wave your hands at me, make a joyful noise? Woo! That's right, like what King David says, great is our Lord and greatly to be praised. If you believe that, shall we give him a big hand? Hallelujah, that's right, let everyone that has breath praise the Lord. Right, church, are you ready to praise him today? Make some noise! Woo! Clap your hands with me and put a big smile on your face. Here we go!
Father, we come boldly before you and we offer up our sacrifice of praise. And we're going to raise a hallelujah for all the good things you have done. Amen, amen. And as we sing this song, we're going to declare victory. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness. Victory over cancer. Victory over depression. Hallelujah. Woo, come on. Come with hand. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on. I raise a hallelujah.
Holy Spirit, we want you. So much more of you. Come on, church. We welcome you.
love you, we love you, we love you. You know, church, in the book, Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, we read on the passage about Mary and Martha. If there's one thing that all of us here should be concerned about, that will be about our relationship, our love for our Lord Jesus. One thing that's so needful and evidently Mary had chosen, and that is to sit at the feet of Jesus amidst all the activities. She's willing to sit and gaze upon Jesus, to be willing to listen and obey whatever he says, submit to him and to be molded by him. And most of all, she's so willing to just love Jesus, devoted to Jesus unconditionally. You know, Charles Spurgeon once said, if we want a big revival, it must first start at the feet of Jesus, at Master's feet. And Mary had chosen the good part, to love him no matter what. Come church, love him. Give your heart to him. The crowd of your heart, church, would you give the Lord a big hand clap? Let Jesus know that we love you. Let the Lord know. Let's send our love from our hearts to heaven, shall we? Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful love of God here in our midst. You know what, as we were worshipping the Lord, I was reminded of Job chapter 7. The Lord says, Job says this, What is man that you give him so much attention, that you should set your heart on him, that you should visit him every morning, looking on them to see how they are doing. You know what, just as much as we are concerned with our relationship with the Lord, to put him first in our life, you know what, God, you are first in his heart every morning, the first thing that He wants to do is to visit you. The first thing that He wants to do is to check in on you to see how are you doing. That is the kind of love Jesus has for us. What a wonderful God we serve. 
What a wonderful God we serve. Oh, won't you, church, give God a big hand clap. Let Him know that likewise, we want to love you the same, Jesus. We want to love you the same, Lord. Oh, won't you lift your hands and talk to the Lord a little bit more, church. Just pray in the Spirit. Send your love to the Lord. Let Him know that you want to love Him the same. You are first in our life. Every morning, the first thing that we are concerned with, Lord, is You, is You. We want to check in on You, Lord. the crown of our heart when we know that as we draw near to you Lord you draw near to us this afternoon come and tabernacle with us Lord come and show us your glory we want to know you more and the more we know you the more we fall in love with you and the more we love you Lord the more we want to serve you so Lord this afternoon we welcome you Come and be in our midst. Come and rule and reign over our hearts and our minds. Come and be enthroned in the praises and the worship of your people, Lord. So we give you all our praise and all our worship. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Lord is with us, huh? Before you're seated, church, first of all, welcome to our weekend service. I know that you're in for a great time. So before you're seated, won't you fist bump with your neighbor, tell your neighbor that Jesus loves you and I love you too. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to our weekend service. Whether you're on site or joining us online, thank you for making time to join us this afternoon. Now, if you are a new friend here joining us for the first or the second time, you are our very special guest at the end of the service. Please don't be in a hurry to go. Please visit our VIP lounge at the hall uh, next to this. There's a hot spot. We have friendly greeters for that. They want to connect with you and serve you a cup of complimentary coffee. So please stay back and join us. We do love you just as the Lord loves you. Amen. Well, church, uh, this afternoon, I also want to make an announcement. And that is we are deeply saddened to inform you that our board member, Vincent Ong's wife, Eileen, had went home to be with the Lord yesterday morning. So this has been the most difficult season for his family. So if you know him, you know Vincent and the family, please do encourage them. Now, at this juncture, we want to pray for the family, we want to commit them to the Lord. So shall we, wherever you are, where you are seated, let's just look to the Lord in prayer. I want you to just intercede for them, shall we? Like what the Bible says, when one member of the body hurts, the entire body hurts. So let's just pray together right now. 
Sikara bahante ria la gara bahante ria la gara bahante ria la gara bahaya. Shuturi la gara bahante ria la gara bahante ria la gara bahaya. Father, we lift up Vincent and the entire family into your hands. Lord, we know that no matter what season of our life we are in, like what Psalms 23 says, yea, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we fear no evil because you are with us. Lord, we ask for your precious presence to be so close to Vincent and the entire family. Let them know that you are with them. Let them know that you are near. Holy Spirit, be their paracletos, the one who have come alongside them to journey with them, to walk with them. I pray for your comfort, for your peace, to guard their hearts and their minds. Lord, I pray that you give them courage to journey on. And Lord, we know that you never leave us, you never forsake us. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. So Lord, we commit the family into your hands. We pray for the daughters, pray for our mom. Lord, we pray that you come and heal their heart. Let your presence be their constant companion. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We also do keep Vincent and his family in prayer during this difficult time. At this point, we want to prepare our hearts uh, for the Holy Communion. This is the first weekend of the new month. So, Pastor Zhuang. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Right, so now uh, on your seat, you ought to have these elements of the Holy Communion. So you may just prepare yourself. I want to read to you, or let's read together the Apostles' Creed. You'll be shown on the screen, on the LED. So if you're ready, let's start reading from now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Jesus also taught the disciples how to pray. So let's pray the Lord's Prayer together, starting from now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive others who have sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today as we partake of uh, Holy Communion, we are reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross. His crucifixion, His death, then His burial, His resurrection, and His ascension. Now Jesus told us in Matthew 26, the Bible says, Jesus gave thanks, broke the bread and said, Take and eat, this is my body. On a cross, the body of Jesus was broken for us so that He can give to us healing for our body. Today, whatever sickness we may experience, let's believe and have faith in God for healing. Amen? And then verse 27, He says, Then He took a cup and when He had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. On the cross, Jesus shed His blood so that we can receive forgiveness of our sins. Why don't we just take out this element right now? Shall we just hold it and just leave it up to the Lord right now? The Bible says before we partake of these elements, we must examine our hearts. Today, Jesus is here to love us, to forgive us. He shed His blood for us. His body was broken for us. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for all that you have done for us, sending your son Jesus to die for us on the cross. And on the cross, his body was broken for us. And in exchange, we can receive healing. He shed his blood for us. And in exchange, we can receive forgiveness. So we are thankful for the work of the cross. We love you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Let's partake of this bread together. The body of Christ is broken for us. Let's partake this cup together. The blood of Christ was shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Aris. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Zhuang. Hallelujah. How many of you today are still excited to be in the presence of God here? Amen. Well, uh, right now we would like to collect God's tithes and offering. And uh, let's prepare our hearts to give our best offering to Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know what, church? For this offering, I just want you to go to the book of Malachi, chapter 3. And this is the verse that all of us uh, are already very familiar, right? And it says here, Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. You know what, church? Every time we come to this verse, and every time when we read this verse, you know, our, un our understanding of giving and tithing must be accurate and must be correct. How many of you can say amen? It's important that when we read this verse, our understanding of giving and tithing should not be the cause and effect concept. You know what, church? Cause and effect means when you give, right, it's a formula. That means it will definitely cause an effect to happen immediately. You know, when you give, when you tithe, don't think that immediately, the heavens will immediately open up and immediately, right, there is a waterfall of blessing coming your way. You know what, church? When you have this concept of giving, cause and effect, it is, the, another word for it is called causation. Causation, right? Now, church, you, mu you must know that this verse is not talking to us. It's not teaching us the causation effect of giving. How many of you know that when we give to the Lord, very seldom, very rarely, that when you walk out of this place, immediately there's a waterfall of money coming down from heaven upon your life. It doesn't happen that way. Who can say amen? Church, we must know that when we give and tithe to God, yes, there will be blessing. How many of you can say amen? Yes, there will be a multiplication of our seeds coming our way in return. However, the effect of that blessing is not the effect of causation, but it is the effect of correlation. Correlation means, even though it is not a direct effect, giving is part of the many variables that we do by faith that have a direct or indirect blessing to us. Church, over the years, you guys have heard the many testimonies from our church members, examples in the Bibles, and even famous successful Christian businessmen who testify as they give and tithe to the Lord. Those things are just one of the many variables that they quoted, that contributed to their success. How many of you can say amen? That's why when we give, it is not a cause and effect, it is not a causation, but giving and tithing is part of the spiritual formation that you and I need to cultivate consistently in good times and bad times because it is related for our spiritual growth. And that's why today, as we give to the Lord, you must know, right, this is part of growing up, maturing of our faith in God. Because in good times or in bad times, how many of you know, as we exercise our faith and give our best offering to the Lord, God 
will certainly open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing upon our life. How many of you can say amen to that? If you believe that, let's give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. So church, you must know that this is part of the spiritual formation, the spiritual disciplines that you and I need to cultivate in life. And you know what? As you do that faithfully, over the years, you can see giving and tithing is one of the many variables that God used in our life to bring blessing upon our life. So today, let's continue to exercise this faith and give our offering to Jesus. How many of you are ready to give to the Lord? Amen? Well, by now, you should already know how to give. There is a QR code that you can scan, that you can use and open your bank application and give your best offering to the Lord. And of course, tithing. Now, also, if you, are, if you want to give using cash, just lift up your hands and the ushers will pass one offering envelope to you, right? And uh, make sure that you keep this envelope with you and only after the service is over, at the exit points, you can put in those envelopes in the offering boxes available outside. Praise the Lord. God loves a cheerful giver. And as your hands are still lifted and the ushers are serving you, and those of you are still scanning and you can use the CAC app to give as well, we, let's pray and let's give our best offering, all right? Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you that today we want to participate in this giving. Father, we know that this giving, Lord, is the many ways that you use to bring about spiritual growth and maturity in our life. And that's why, Lord, as we exercise our faith, not only our faith will grow, but Father, we pray that our life will be blessed by you as well. I pray, God, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing upon each and every one of us so that we can see your faithfulness in our life. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God one more big round of applause. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Now church, this weekend is a very special weekend as well because this is a weekend whereby we want to honor all the mothers. This weekend is Mother's Day. Alright? Now, later on, we're going to have a testimony because we have prepared a lovely testimony by Vivian and Daryl to honor their mom, Vanessa, and they are actually the children of Pastor Don Wong. So they are here, here. Let's give Pastor Don a big round of applause. Amen, right? Now, before we welcome them on stage, okay, right, we also have one more announcement, and that is Emerge Service is going to happen on the 29th of May, Sunday at 3.30 p.m. right here in this hall. How many of you today are Emerge and you are excited for this coming Emerge Service, all right? Okay? Now, before we have the testimony, we're going to show you a video right now. And this video is to really get things started. And it's going to show us all the eMERGE camps that our youth enjoyed pre-COVID days. Now, we're going to resume our June youth camps this year. And in total, we have 10 camps happening at the various dates and time. Okay, right? In June. So guys, please, if you belong to any one of the zones, you can sign up with your cell group leaders and participate in our upcoming youth camps. All right, right? So if you guys are ready, let's watch the video right now. And then after that, we're going to have the testimony. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Thank you. Hallelujah.
Hi, church. My name is Vivian. And I'm Do. Today is Mother's Day, and we're up here to appreciate all the mothers here in City Harvest. We know that all mothers are wonderful, but my brother and I would like to play a special tribute to our mom. Our mom, Vanessa, is a person who expresses her love through her cooking, her attentiveness, and her small little acts of service. You know, she's the person that we go to whenever we have, we run into trouble. And whenever we can't find something in the house, we we'll always go to her because she knows exactly where everything is at any time. She's like the administrator and the manager all rolled into one. Don't forget the executive director. Yes, and the executive director of our household. Well, as Pastor Iris said earlier, our father is Pastor Don Wong, the founder of the New Caris Mission. It's a halfway house that helps ex-offenders um, reintegrate back into society. Over at the New Caris Mission, our mother is the, she, she works in the corporate office, but she's not just our mother, but she's the mother to every single brother and resident in the New Caris Mission. <laughs> She's known to all, she's known to all as the mother of the house, or we call her Shimu. Right, she really believes in every brother, and she's their biggest cheerleader. Well, her motherly love goes beyond just our family and our blood, as she has so many, so many spiritual sons and daughters. Yeah, growing up, our mom was quite strict when it came to our behavior and how we conducted ourselves in public. Uh, both our parents agreed on the principle of spare the rod and spoil the child. But Daryl, do you remember the times you were disciplined for lying when you were younger? Never. <laughs> but I remember you had to face the wall whenever you didn't want to sleep early. <laughs> right? But be honest, both of us were not spared the rod. And maybe when we were young, it was a little bit, a, a lot of rage and resentment because we didn't understand why we were getting disciplined. But as we grew older, we knew that there is consequences to actions. But this discipline, also allow us to mature better. And as we grow up, they didn't just become, our mom wasn't just a discipliner, but she became more of our coach and our mentor. Well, our mother's love language is acts of service. Whether it's at home or at the New Care's Mission, you can always see her, even behind the scenes, putting the maximum effort and all the hard work. And her reward is seeing the results of her efforts. She has shown us as her children, everyone at New Care's, how to put God first, especially in relationships. Yeah, I remember when we were young, my mom was juggling her work at the New Caris Mission, taking care of us, and at one point, even running a business as well. I can't imagine right now how she was able to do all of that. But no matter the difficulty, we all witness how you pulled through to tough times and depend on the Lord. Daryl, which um, fruit of the Spirit do you think is most apparent in, in mom? For sure, the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. For our mother, she was already serving the Lord full-time at the age of 24. And she, de she decided to take things further and marry the pastor. <laughs> All right? And when you're married to a pastor, you know that it's a lifetime of adventure, fun. But it's never a smooth sailing journey. And all the pastors and their wives can say, Amen. <laughs> all right, back to our mother. All right, staying in this family through the thick and thin and all the hard times, but at the same time, she shows the same love to us and everyone at the New Caris Mission. Well, that is truly the mark of her faithfulness to God and to others. Well, Jess, since you're older than me, I need to ask you, have you ever seen mom stressed at any time? Of course. <laughs> She's someone who juggles a lot of responsibilities. The truth is, we are all human and we all have limits. I remember seeing how she juggled work and at the same time, she's doing her Masters of Arts in ministry and having to look after the family. She was under a tremendous amount of stress, but the family came together and we helped the best we could by helping out with some housework at home. I was once asked this question as a daughter, what one trait of my mom do I want to have when I become a mom myself one day? I think I hope to be as steadfast as she is in work, in parenting and in ministry, firm but with lots of love and gentleness in everything that she does. So Daryl, now I'll ask you, what is one trait of our mom you would like to see in your future wife? Wow, <laughs> loaded question. Well, our mom is a fiercely independent and a very secure person. And it's not just secure in herself, but secure in God. I would love to have a partner who is certain of her self-worth 
and more importantly, of her worth in God. In Proverbs 31, it says that beauty is deceitful and, and fleeting, but a, a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. And I can say for sure, my mom has the fear of the Lord in her. And I would love to have a partner who's exactly the same. Hi, Ba. <laughs> amen, amen. So right now, I would just like to invite our mom to stand. <laughs> Oma, we really appreciate you for all you have done and sacrificed for us. Thank you for teaching us how to love, how to serve by being that perfect example. So we would like to present a small gift for you this Mother's Day to let you know how much we love you. We love you. Happy love Mother's you. Day. Happy Mother's Day. Shall we give Vanessa and all the mothers here in City Harvest Church a big, big round of applause. Happy, happy Mother's Day. Well, church, today is a special day because 7th of May is also City Harvest birthday. So can you help me by turning to your neighbour and say, Happy Birthday, City Harvest Church. And on this special day, I think that it's only appropriate and right that we as a church honours the spiritual mother of this house. Because the Bible teaches us that we must give honour to whom honour is due. You know, son, as I thought of you, Galatians chapter 4, verse 9 came to my mind. Paul says, My dear children, for whom I'm again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Apostle Paul described the work of the ministry, the building of the church, and he likens it to the excruciating pain of childbirth. Likewise, son, he has been 33 years. And I cannot imagine how many painful moments it must have been the last 33 years in building City Harvest. There must be moments of joy, but there must be moments of excruciating pain. But like a good mother, you continue on faithfully, lovingly obeyed the Lord together with pastor and built City Harvest to where we are today. So church, if you are thankful for City Harvest, you're thankful for pastor and son, shall we just give them a big round of applause? Thank you, son. Amen. Amen. Like many of you here, I'm sure we have all been so impacted by the preaching and the prophetic ministry of son here on stage. But personally, what I'm most blessed by is the Sun backstage. And I've been privileged to get to observe Sun backstage. And all I can say is that who Sun is in public, she's even more so in private. What, one thing I've often said to Sun is, Sun, whenever I look at the relationship you have with Dayan, you make me want to have a son myself. Dayan is a wonderful and sweet young man. There must have been something that you have done so right as a mother. And I would love to grow up to be a mother like you. But I think what I love most about you, son, is your love, your hunger, and your honour for the Holy Spirit. I think probably that almost every other time I've been in your presence, I always leave with tears in my eyes because I will always leave with this hunger and this desire to know the Holy Spirit more because you are such a lover of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please honour son and just give her a big hand. I guess this is how we are all shaped by the spiritual mothers in our lives. And for that, I'm eternally grateful to Sun. And I think CHC, we are so blessed to have her as our spiritual mother because everything trickles downwards. So can we just... Shall we all just yeah. stand up on our feet and let's honour the mother of this yes. house. Let's honour... Thank you, Sun. Happy Mother's Day, Sun. Happy Mother's Day, Sun. And happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just give, let's give all the mothers a big hand. Amen. 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 Just remain standing. This evening, spiritual, um, my spiritual mother, son and my spiritual mother, Sister Esther Wong, is here with us. We just want to honor her, Sister Esther. Well, happy Mother's Day. Come on, can you just give it up to Sister Esther? Amen. Amen. Why don't you just turn around to at least five other people, go to somebody that looks like a mom, and just say Happy Mother's Day. Can you just do it right now? Just remain standing, and, and like what uh, Calvin said a moment ago, 33 years ago, City Harvest Church had our first service at Peace Center. We are 33 years old today, <laughs> 7 of May, 1989. So, one more time, go to somebody you have not fist bumped yet so far and say happy 33rd anniversary. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the heavenly places. Ah, so much tears, you know. <laughs> I told myself I'm not going to be weepy today. <laughs> anyway, I just want you to know my latest sermon series on Theosis is available at our bookstore. And Theosis is the process of growing in spiritual oneness with God. This is a six part video series. And I will teach you how to develop spiritual intimacy with the Lord. And because it's a video series, you have all the teaching graphics as well. So check it out at our TRL bookstore. There's a special discount, I understand, for this weekend and for this month. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, Eugene, thank you so much. Amen. Today's Mother's Day, so let me tell you a funny joke. Mother's Day joke. You know, James is already 32 years old, and he's still single. So one day, a friend asked him, why aren't you married? Can't you find a, a woman who is good enough to be your wife? So James replied, actually, I found many girls I wanted to marry. But whenever I bring them home to meet my parents, my mom wouldn't like them. <laughs> so his friend thought for a moment and said, I got a perfect solution. Just find a girl who is exactly like your mom. Just find someone exactly like her. A few months later, they met again. So his friend said, so James, do you find the perfect girl yet? Did your mom like her? With a frown on his face, James answered, yeah, I found the perfect girl and she's exactly like my mother. And you are right, my mom likes her very much because she is just like her. The friend said, then what's the problem? James replied, well, my father doesn't like her. <laughs> uh, seriously. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day. We just want to honor and celebrate all the mothers. One more time, give all the mom a big clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a popular Chinese lullaby, Shi Shang Zi Yu Ma Ma Hao. It's a Mother's Day song that is sung by Chinese all over the world. And it means that in this world, there is no love like a mother's love. And in many ways, this is very true. During the 2008 Great Sichuan Earthquake, our church sent many volunteers and teams to China to help with the disaster relief work. Sun was also there with her team to help out. But do you know the day after the earthquake, many Chinese rescuers were searching for survivors behind all the rubble. When they were going through the ruins of a young woman's house, they saw a body through the cracks. And the way she was crouching was rather strange. She was kneeling down and her body was leaning forward and her two hands were carrying an object. The house had collapsed on her, crushing her head and her back. With much difficulty, 
the leader of the rescue team, put his hand through the cracks of the wall, a narrow gap, just trying to reach this woman. But when he was able to touch her, she was cold and stiff. Clearly, she had already passed away. The rescuers left this house and were going to the next collapsed building. Then the team leader, for some reason, felt he had to go back to the dead woman again. This time, he pushed his hand through the narrow cracks, right into the little space under the dead body. Suddenly, he screamed with excitement, there's a child, there's a child, and he's still alive. The whole team came together and carefully removed pile after pile of wood and towels and bricks. They found a three-month-old little baby boy who was wrapped in a blanket and tucked under this mother's body. You see, when her house was falling down, she used her body as a covering, as a shield to protect her son. The little baby was still soundly asleep when the team leader picked him up. When the medical doctor came to examine the baby, he opened up the blanket and he saw a mobile phone inside the blanket. There was a text message on the screen and it said, my dearest child, if you are able to survive, you must remember that mommy loves you. Wow, <laughs> amen. This mobile phone was passed from hand to hand and everyone who read the message wept. My dearest child, if you are able to survive, you will remember or you must remember that mommy loves you. Such is the love of a mother. This story was later reported by Xinhua News Agency and was circulated all around the world. In our culture today, there are so many different types of mothers. There is the working mom, the single mom, the tiger mom, the panda mom, the <laughs> soccer mom, the workout mom, the trendy mom, and the hot mom. <laughs> but what about the godly mom? Have you thought about that? What are the characteristics of a godly mother? For this, we need to go to the Bible. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, there is a story about King David, but this was not his finest moment. In 2 uh, 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 Samuel chapter 11, and let's look together at verse 1. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. It was a time of war, and it was the duty of kings to go out to battle, to fight for their people, to defend their land. But David stayed behind. One evening, he was feeling restless. So he went up to the rooftop terrace of his palace, and there he could see his entire kingdom below. David saw a young woman bathing, and verse two says, she was very beautiful. And she looked vaguely familiar. Where did I see her before? So David asked his man to check her out. Well, 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 he was right. He did know her. Her name was Bathsheba. Both her father and her husband were members of David's elite fighting force. It was, they were David's commandos. He had known Bathsheba ever since she was quite young. At this point in his life, David was very powerful. He felt entitled to avoid what he didn't want, which was to fight in a battle, and entitled to take what he did not have, which was young, beautiful Bathsheba regardless of how his choice would impact others. Spiritually, David was not in a good place. So knowing that both her father and husband were out in the battlefield to fight, and no one was at home, he sent men to take her. In verse four of 2 Samuel chapter 11, it says over here, then David sent messengers and had her brought. And when she came to him, he slept with her, surrounded by forceful men. But Sheba had no choice but to go to the palace 
And you can guess what happened next. King David slept with her. It was horrible, terrible. Now, Bathsheba was a respected woman, a very godly woman. Back then, according to Leviticus chapter 15 and verse 18, after sexual relations, the law required religious washing. You got to purify yourself. And that was exactly what Bathsheba did. Look at the Bible again. And when she had purified herself from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. Can you imagine, after such a sexual violation, what was on her mind was the word of God. Bathsheba was still thinking about how she got to carefully obey every commandment in the word. Even in a state of shock, Bathsheba was thinking, what does the word say about this? Oh, I need to purify myself. So she cleansed herself from this terrible sinful act. What happened wasn't her fault, but she wanted to consecrate herself afresh to God, to restore her holiness again. Only then did she return to her home. You know what, the evil didn't end there. When Bathsheba was later found to be pregnant, King David had her husband Uriah killed. God was so grieved by the evil that was in David. Bathsheba loved Uriah. So when she heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. This was still not the end. David ordered for her to be taken to his palace again and made her his wife. Bathsheba eventually lost the child that she had given birth to. But God comforted her by giving her another son, Solomon. He was a very important son. And Solomon was loved by Yahweh and became the next king of Israel. See, Bathsheba was a very godly woman. God loved her deeply, and she became one of the five mothers listed in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, many Bible scholars believe that the godly woman of Proverbs 31 was really Bathsheba herself, or at least they were her words. Proverbs 31 is where you heard Daryl quoted just now, the famous verse. Charm is deceitful, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31 and verse 30. On this Mother's Day, I want to look with all of you what is or what are the characteristics of a godly mother. What are some of the characteristics of a mother who is godly? Number one, a godly mother reads the Bible. <laughs> Very simple, but not so easy. Just think about it. Even in the midst of a trauma, Bathsheba was conscious of God's commandment. Even in the shock, she had just been sexually violated. And yet, at that point, she wanted to obey the word of God. It is this love for the Bible that impacted her children greatly, especially Solomon. Years later, when Solomon became king, he would write down some of the advices Bathsheba, and of course David, his dad, gave him. Look, for example, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3, verse 1 and 2, it says over here, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Bathsheba was a woman who hid God's word, God's command in her heart in both good times and bad times because she had discovered that God's word is life, that God's word will purify us, that it comforts us, it draws us closer to God, it causes spiritual growth, that the word of God is powerful to fight sin and that it brings great, great blessing. As a mother, Bathsheba may not be so good in the sciences or in the technologies or the philosophy or the arts or the history, but the Bible gave her wisdom to raise her son in the ways of God. 
And let me tell you, mothers, imparting God's ways is one of the biggest roles of every mother's life. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says here in verse 6 and 7, these commandments I will give you today, or these, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. You know, this means that talking to our kids about God and His ways is the most important job for a mother. You have to do it in the house, outside the home, as often as you can, all day long. The Bible gave Bathsheba great wisdom to guide Solomon. Number one, a godly mother reads the Bible. So simple, but not so easy to do with all the busyness of life. Number two, a godly mother prays and trusts in the Lord. A godly mother prays and trusts the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 3, and verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Here is the advice of Bathsheba to Solomon because she has learned this. We all live in a broken down world where life is never a, str a straight line. If anything, life throws many curved balls at you. Curve balls, challenges of life that's unexpected, surprising, they come suddenly. But those who trust in the Lord be solid like Mount Zion and they will not be moved. Psalm 125 and verse one. When you learn to pray over every situation and trust in the Lord, He will make your paths straight. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. When you study the godly mother or the godly wife of Proverbs 31, there is one common theme throughout the verses, throughout the whole chapter. No matter what life throws at this woman, she just keeps praying and trusting the Lord. Whether it's a job or caring for the home or making the marriage work, no matter what happens, she doesn't give up when things are getting hard. Amen. Instead, she just prays and prays and prays and prays and seek God for help, seek God for strength and for guidance. Mom, you don't need to be a superwoman. You don't need to be a, a supergirl who knows everything and can do everything. God is not expecting you to be almighty. No. Our faith is never about how great we are. Our faith is always in how God He is. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, you want to clap? Let's give God a big clap. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. And when you are weak, He will show Himself strong for you and in you. When you are low, He's going to lift you up. Live through Bathsheba, a terrible curveball. Terrible. She was young, happily married to a wonderful man, a loyal, mighty soldier of David, his personal loyal bodyguard. She was full of beautiful dreams for her life. In one night, everything was gone. In one night, she was violated. Then her husband was killed. And then she lost her baby. And then she had to marry the man who victimized her. In the grand scheme of things, there was no way Bathsheba could have known how her life would pan out. But she was a daughter of promise. Because do you know the name Bathsheba literally means a daughter of promise. That's the meaning of Bathsheba. Doesn't mean she likes to take bath. It means that she's the daughter of promise. She kept believing in God's promises. She kept praying and trusting the Lord. And she learned that when you acknowledge Him in all your ways and submit to Him, He will make straight your path. 
God took all that is ugly in her life, the adultery, the murder of her husband, the loss of her baby, and turned it around into something beautiful. Against all odds, she went on to become the great mother of a nation and raise up a son who had become the wisest king ever lived. Come on, go ahead and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But most of all, you know what's the greatest blessing? She was brought into the Messianic bloodline and became a part of the genealogy of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Amen. This is what godliness in your motherhood will do for you. Number one, a godly mother reads the Bible. Number two, a godly mother prays and trusts the Lord. Number three, a godly mother loves unconditionally. Loves unconditionally. Bathsheba told Solomon, again, Proverbs 3 and verse 3 and verse 4, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Turn to somebody on left and right and say, let love never leave you. Amen. God is love. God is faithful. Love is who He is. And the Bible says that of all the virtues of life, the greatest is love. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13. But Sheba was the most loving wife. She genuinely loved her husband Uriah. She mourned deeply for him when he died. And when he was subsequently married to David, she learned to love him and to stay faithful to him. She was a victim, but she didn't remain a victim. She didn't hold on to a victim mentality. Oh, life is so unfair to me. Everyone is mistreating me. Everyone is against me. No. She chose to love even when it was difficult to love. Her character was so beautiful. But Sheba commanded the respect of a whole nation, including the prophet Nathan, who was not an easy prophet to please, if you know your Bible. Not every woman is called to be a mother. But if the Lord blesses you to be a mom, what you now have is something very unique and very important. You play a very important role in the lives of your kids. There is a kind of tender love and care and nurture and encouragement that only a mother can give that no father can ever offer. There is a kind of love that only son can give day and that no matter what I do, I can never give it to him. No matter how old your kids have grown, whether they are now teenagers, adolescents, young adults, or even adults with children of their own, everyone needs the tender love and care and nurture that only a mother can give. And moms, you must never stop loving, no matter how old your kids are. Don't think they don't need my love anymore. No matter how old they are, your kids always need your love, your loving kindness, your faithfulness. It breathes life into your children. Your tenderness, your nurturing, give them a healthy foundation for living. Showing your kids unconditional love is the greatest thing you can ever do for them. And this is not always easy. Loving your kids unconditionally, not easy. Especially when your kids are testing your patience. (laughs) And yes, they can really test our patience. When I was young, I was a handful for my mother to handle. I heard a joke this past week too. A little girl was sitting and watching the mother doing the dishes at the kitchen sink. And she suddenly notices that her mother has several strands of white hair sticking out in contrast to her black hair. 
So she looks at her mom and asks inquisitively, why are some of your hairs white, mom? Her mother replied, well, every time you do something wrong and you make mommy cry, one of my hairs will turn white. The little girl thought for a moment and then asked the mother again, mommy, then how come all of grandma's hairs are white? <laughs> you know, kids can be garam, eh? <laughs> they can really test our patience, especially the smart alecky one. Turn your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Yeah. But seriously, when you can display unconditional love, your kids get a glimpse of how much God loves them. Give them grace when they messed up. Accept them for who they are and learn to accept what they enjoy, even if sometimes it is not your cup of tea. Only with unconditional love will your children have the freedom to become who God is calling them to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Linked to this is my final point, my last point. Number four, a godly mother forgives unceasingly. And if anyone can forgive, it was Bathsheba. She forgave David. She forgave the monarchy system that trap her. She lived in a time where there's no human rights or women rights. She didn't blame God for the unfairness she had received or the injustice she had faced in life. She chose not to be bitter or resentful or angry. She just kept forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. And this is what Christianity is all about. Christianity is all about forgiveness. God sent His only Son to die for us because He wanted to forgive us. On the cross, the first words of Jesus Christ was this, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We can freely forgive when we realize just how much we ourselves have been forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and verse 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Jesus says, those who are forgiven much, they love much. None of us is perfect. To be a Christian, is to forgive the imperfection in others because you know God has forgiven the imperfections in you. When you have a revelation, how much God has forgiven your many, 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 many imperfections, you can easily be gracious to anyone. When I realize how much God has forgiven my many, 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 many imperfections, too many, who is there I cannot forgive? Bathsheba could even be gracious to David, the man that caused her so much pain and sorrow. Four characteristics of a godly mother. Number one, a godly mother reads the Bible. Number two, a godly mother prays and trusts the Lord. Number three, a godly mother loves unconditionally. Number four, a godly mother forgives unceasingly. Being a mom, it's not easy, never easy. When I look at my own mother, and when I look at my mother-in-law, and when I look at my wife's son, I'm amazed just how godly and prayerful, loving and forgiving they are. Mothers are some of the busiest people around, so much to do and so little time. Whether you're a working mom or a full-time mom, maybe you feel you're too busy to learn to be godly. You really wish you could have time to read the Bible, to read the Bible more, to pray more, to trust God more, to be more loving, to be more forgiving. But moms, you can be godly because if you are willing, the Holy Spirit is here to help you. The Holy Spirit is to empower you. He cannot help you if you're not willing. If you say, Lord, not my will, 
but yours be done. Holy Spirit, come and help me. Today, what you need, the strength, the grace to be godly, that power will be there to help you. Tonight is Mother's Day, or tomorrow is Mother's Day. I'm not here to lecture our mothers. <laughs> I'm here to honor you, to thank you for never giving up. Yeah? To thank you. All of us exist in this world because of moms. Without our moms, none of us will be sitting here today. <laughs> if your mom is still alive, you're truly blessed because you still have the chance to love them. Amen. How many of you love your moms tonight? Put up your hands right now. Yeah. This weekend, give them attention. Fast over them. Give them appreciation. Thank them for loving you. Thank them for raising you. I love it. Every time I look at son, son will go to her mom, go to my mom, say, mommy, mommy, mommy. Thank you, we love you. Mommy, 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 you're so pretty. Thank you for cooking. Your cooking is so great. <laughs> Just pour your appreciation. Give them all your affection. Hug them. You say, I'm an Asian. I don't know how to be expressive. I'm teaching you right now. <laughs> Go and hug your mom. Give them a kiss. I promise you, it will fill up their love tanks. This weekend, make their day. Give them the strength to keep on going to keep on being godly, to keep loving and nurturing and caring. Come, let's all stand up on our feet right now. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. Whether you're a mom or you're not a mom, you're a male, you're a female, come, let's just worship God for a moment. Let's just love the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First things, first Lord.
wonder what eyes are closed and heads are bowed. I know this evening is Mother's Day, weekend celebration. But how many of you, male or female, whether you're a mother, your father, whether you're single, how many of you want to be more godly in your life? You want to read the Bible more. You want to pray more. You want to trust God more. You want to love more. You want to be more forgiving as a person. But life is so busy. Life is, sometimes it's just out of control. But today you say, Lord, I want to be godly. Tonight you're inspired by the life of Bathsheba. Life threw a curveball at her. But yet, she trusted the Lord. And the Holy Spirit helped her. And she became one of the most godly mothers in the history of Israel. Tonight, how many of you, you want to have more time to pray, more time to read the Bible? You want to trust God more, have more faith? You want to be more loving as a person, more forgiving? That's you wherever you are. Just lift up your hands all over this place right now. Just talk in tongues. Lift up both hands and just talk in tongues. Suduria la carabaha, deria 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 la carabaha. I want you most, Lord. I want you always. I We just humble ourselves before the Lord right now. I just want you to just close your eyes. I want you to just open up your hearts. I want everybody, whether you're on site, you're online, some of you are watching this service right now. God is closer to you than your very breath. I want you to say this prayer together with me. I want you to say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight in Jesus' name. I give you full permission, Holy Spirit. I give you full permission, Holy Spirit. Help me to be more godly. Help me to be more godly. Help me to understand the Bible more. Help me to understand the Bible more. To pray more. To pray more. To have more faith to trust in you. To have more faith to trust in you. To declare your word more. To declare your word more. I want to be more loving. I want to be more loving. I want to be more forgiving. I want to be more forgiving. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Will you lift up your hands and just pray and tell the Lord to help you? Just pray in the spirit right now. From the front to the back, from the left to the right. Suduria la karabahada, dia la karabahada, dia la karabahada. Suduria la karabahada, dia la karabahada, dia la karabahada. Suduria la carabaha, deria la carabaha, deria la carabaha. Suduria la carabaha, deria la carabaha. I want you most, Lord. I want you always. I want you more Right now, I want to speak to all the mothers in this place. Once again, I close and hate about how many of you moms are dealing with a crisis right now. Maybe you're very burdened over your family, over your future. Or you could be a single mom and trying so hard to survive and to make ends meet. And it seems that it's just life is just filled with one challenge after another challenge, one crisis after another crisis. Or you could be a mom and you feel so worn out and you feel like you have nothing more to give. You have nothing more to give to your family, to your kids, to your husband, to anyone, to the Lord. I want to encourage you. Tonight you can trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and acknowledge Him in all your ways. And He is going to make straight your path. Tonight, bring Jesus into the middle of your situation. Tonight, why don't we pray as a church for a turnaround? Why don't we pray tonight as a church and believe God for a breakthrough? We believe God for a miracle. We believe God for every little mercy 
And when they all add up together, they can turn your setback into a great comeback. Why don't tonight we just believe God? I wonder how many of you, you say, Pastor, that's me. Tonight, I need a miracle. Tonight, I need a breakthrough. Tonight, if that's you, wherever you are, eyes closed, haze are bowed, just lift up your hands all over this place, right? Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Yeah, I see all your hands lifted up right now. This is what we're going to do, all right? This is what we're going to do. If you feel comfortable, right? I know we are still in the COVID season. If you feel comfortable, then just hold your neighbor's hands. If, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to hold it. But the place of agreement is a place of power. Can you just hold our neighbor's hands right now? If you feel comfortable about that, right? No pressure, no pressure. Come, let's just pray. Let's just believe God for a miracle to happen in our situation. Everybody just pray right now. Show to the Allah Hallelujah. Let's just all declare this together. Where two or three come together, touching whatsoever, anything, it shall be done according to our prayers. Everybody say out loud with me. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I just live my situation into your hands. Lord, I just live my situation into your hands. Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. Come into the center of my crisis. Come into the center of my crisis. Provide for all my needs. Provide for all my needs. Give me strength to overcome. Bring me strength to overcome. Satan, I rebuke you right now. Satan, I rebuke you right now. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. Get out of my family. Get out of my family. Get out of my home. Get out of my home. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray, pray for our neighbors on your left and your right? Shuduri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahada. Shuduri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahada. Shuduri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi. Just pray in the name of Jesus. Shuduri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabah. Shuduri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadiri Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi. God heard your prayers. Can you give the Lord a big hand right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, clap your hands, all your people. Come on, let's just release faith. God is going to work on our behalf. Give the Lord a shout of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 Before we end tonight, before we end tonight, I want you to just pray for mothers who are standing in our midst. We are all standing up, so it's okay. Just look around you. Someone who seems like a mother say, are you a mother? Can we just go and pray for the person right now? If the person doesn't want you to touch them, it's okay. But if, if they want to, I want you to just lay hands. Son, can you just come to the stage? Let me lay hands on you. Amen. Come on. Are you ready to pray? Let me, let's just all begin to pray for all the mothers right now. Let's open our mouth and pray. Just pray. Just pray. Take a minute and pray. Suduri Allah karabahadari Allah karabahadari Allah karabahadari Allah karabahadari Suduri Allah kar Father I just pray for all the mothers standing in our midst tonight I pray for all those that are on site I pray for all those that are online I pray tonight oh God let there be a new grace a new blessing coming up on their lives right now Father I pray for strength to overcome any challenge I pray oh God you're going to direct them in all their ways you're going to make straight all their path Father, I pray tonight, give them strength, give them grace to read the Bible more. Give them grace, oh God, to pray. Give them grace to trust in you. Let the spirit of faith come upon every mother right now. Father, I just pray you pour your love. You pour your forgiveness. You just pour it, just like you pour it on Bathsheba. You pour it into every mother here tonight. Grace upon grace, faith upon faith, strength unto strength. 
So tonight, oh God, I just pray that Lord, you'll bless them, you'll keep them. Lord, you'll cause your face to shine upon all our mothers and be gracious to them. Give them grace, oh God. And Lord, we just pray tonight you'll lift up your countenance and give them peace. Shalom in every dimension of your life, in their work, in their homekeeping, Lord, in their homemaking, Lord, in their parenting, in their, in, in their marriage, shalom. I pray for peace in every dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Let's just give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Hallelujah. the Lord just give the Lord a big clap one more time hallelujah Woo! God is good and all the time God is good give him praise one more time hallelujah amen 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 this weekend Mother's Day weekend you are going to be nice to your mom amen you're gonna love your mom you're gonna hug your mom kiss your mom Praise your mom. Do something really nice. Before we end the service, tonight we end early so you can have wonderful dinners together with your mummies. Yeah? And all your husbands, do something nice to your wife. Your wife slave for you. This is the least you could do. And all the men say? And all the women say? You see louder. Yeah, I knew that. I knew it's louder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mother of the house, say something to the people, please. I just want to say to all the mothers, we love you so much and we are so proud of you. And I know deep in our hearts, we love the word, we love to pray, we love to forgive, <laughs> and we are definitely in all our ways acknowledged to the Lord and He will make straight our path. Amen. Amen, amen. Everybody, before you go, I want you to find... I want you to find a mother, right? Zero into a mother. And uh, I want you to just go to mother and say, thank you for being such an awesome mom. Can you just do it right now? Even if the person is not your mom, just go and say thank you for being such an awesome mom. God bless you. Service is over. Fellowship just begun. Happy Mother's Day.